There's no way out but up. I'm going to talk to you today about a very important subject, actually my very favorite subject that I've ever preached on over the years, the many years that I've been preaching and teaching God's Word. And um, we're going to start out here in the book of Acts, chapter 8. Uh, as a Christian, you realize that this world is not all that there is. This world is not the ultimate reality. This world is not the ultimate solution and whatever else to all of man's problems are all available right here. Uh, we can find heaven about us right here. No, we understand uh, that the Bible teaches that there is another place, another realm, so to speak, that's much better than this. But historically, Christians have, uh, when they get persecuted in one area, they'll go to some other place. I have to put something on my notes here so they don't fly away. <laughs> but the Acts chapter 8, verse 1 through 4 says... And Saul was consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house, and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. Therefore they, were, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word." Um, one thing you'll learn about the New Testament, the church, the body of Christ in the New Testament, it was never a building. It was never supposed to be some static, fixed structure that just people come to it and whatever else and it can't ever be moved. That's how one of the best ways that you know that Roman Catholicism is not biblical Christianity because they have St. Peter's Basilica. They have all these different cathedrals and temples and all this, the, these uh, great magnificent things that were built by men that's not how it's supposed to be it wasn't that way in the first century it's not that way today and i'll tell you right now there are christians in the world right now at this time that are being persecuted and they want to flee to some other area and they are moving to other areas we ourselves uh, experienced a very low level of persecution where i was raised in pennsylvania that's why we moved here to northern maine a lot of Christians, they'll, they'll be in the city or in, in a town or something, and they see crime increasing, and they say, I better move. I better get out of here. I better move to someplace else or go somewhere else or whatever. That's the story of the New Testament church, the New Testament body of Christ. It's supposed to be movable. It's not a bunch of huge, big, multi-billion-dollar you know, uh, structures and all this real estate all around the world. That you, you don't have to come and you worship at these big, huge temples and think, that's not Christianity. We're supposed to be able to be scattered, you see. Acts chapter 11, go over to Acts chapter 11, I'll show you again. Acts chapter 11, verse 19 through 21, we'll read that. Now they which were scattered abroad... Upon the persecution that arose about Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but the, unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. A lot of people believed because the church was movable, you see. So if we get persecuted over here, we better move over this way. You don't just stay in one spot. That's the whole point. All right? It's in the military, you have infantry charging against an enemy, and the enemy has artillery. You know what you teach the military soldiers, those infantry guys? You teach them don't clump up, don't all get into one little huddle as you're going towards artillery because the artillery guys will just launch a, you know, something and blow you all up. You're supposed to spread out. You're supposed to be you know, arms distance apart from each other. You're supposed to stay, stay away from me. Get over that way. Again, that's what the New Testament church is all about. We don't need huge, big movements of people and, and a billion members, a billion living members. That's not New Testament Christianity. It's a narrow way and few there be that find it. Huh. So the Roman Catholic system and the Protestants that came from that, the Protestant Reformation stuff that came from that, they're constantly teaching, no, it's a, it's a visible thing. We go to church on Sunday. 
We have our special outfits that we wear when we go to church. We have our uh, special uh, things that we get and things, uh, uh, marriage benefits and burial benefits and, and all these great things, insurance policies and all this other stuff. It's all visible. You see, the Bible says the just shall live by faith, not by sight. And yet false religions come along and they say, no, we live by sight and not by faith. Look at the glory of the, of the basilica and listen to the organ music and, oh, look at the Pope in his robes and, and all the, the gold and all the statues and all the... It's all sight. It's not New Testament Christianity. And I'm not, I, I don't hate Catholics because I'm speaking this way. I'm trying to warn you. And they come along and they say, well, well, okay, that was that like that in the first century, but, but it kind of got fixed up later. Where does the Bible say that this would be just part of the revelation and then there'd be church, church tradition that would come out later? It doesn't say that. It doesn't say that at all. The truth of the matter is that the New Testament Christianity never really changed much. We're still a scattered people. We're still not fitting in with most places. And that's a fact. You know what I'm talking about if you're genuinely born again. You understand very well. Go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. I'll show you another one here. You know Peter, the uh, first pope, supposedly. Let's see what he has to say. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 2. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Why do you need peace if you have a big fixed structure? You don't. I mean, you, I, technically you do, I guess, but... Uh, Peace, you really would like to hear peace to you if you're being chased around a lot and hunted down because you're heretics. See, the Catholic Church, they like to come out and they say, where was your church before the Protestant Reformation? Well, we were called heretics and we were hunted down by the animals like you. That's the fact. And uh, Peter said that. You know, St. Peter? Hmm? Uh, it's not, uh, hey, to the churches that are scattered abroad until we have... The Vatican built, and then I'm going to be ruling from there. I'm going to be on, on the throne. You know, my, I'm going to have a throne, special throne just for me, St. Peter's throne. And, you know, where's that at in Scripture? It's not there. It isn't there. But here's the point of this study. We are at a time right now, brethren, where there's no more places to run to. You know why my ancestors came here to America? In 1720, you know why? It wasn't for business connections. It was because they wanted to worship God in their own, according to their own free will, and apart from the Roman Catholic Church. My ancestors are Anabaptist. That's why they came here. We want religious freedom. We want freedom of speech. We don't want to be controlled by organized state-run religion. We don't want that. And we came over here, and it was a good time for a while. A lot of freedom. My ancestors got along with the native people, the indigenous people of America. That's why I have a lot of the skills of hunting and trapping and fishing and foraging and everything else. I went to a you know, high school, Pequay Valley High School. Um, the Pequay Valley Braves, we were called. You know, that, that was the sports thing there and whatever, uh, which I wasn't part of. But the whole point is <laughs> um, we respect, I still respect today, the indigenous people. I've known a few, met a few in the area here and things. It's one of the reasons I fought against the thing of Wolfton mining in the area up near the Penobscot Nation's land and Maliseet uh, Indian land north of us because they have rights to this land. They have rights to this country. And in the Old Testament, back in the book of Genesis, the Bible gives a prophecy that Japheth, the white races, someday would dwell in the tents of Shem. We are scattered I left my native homeland of Germany. That's why we left. We got out of there because we didn't have religious freedom. And for a while, we could move. We could see the evil coming and we could say, okay, I'm going to go over this way and I'm going to scatter and go over this way. But you know what? We're running out of options now. And what we saw happen in 2020 through about 2023 or so um, proved 
that uh, there are no countries that are safe anymore. All countries will bow to the dictates of the Pope. It was a papal pandemic interdict. Proved it. We have the studies to prove it on other secondary channel and on Rumble. Okay, can't have it on this channel. It gets deleted. But the whole point is we are running out of options. And you look out there at this future and you say, they're gearing up for World War III. All the stuff in Ukraine and China invading Taiwan and Israel and Gaza and all this other stuff. And all these different nations, the BRICS countries getting more powerful by the day. We're seeing food factories burn down. All kinds of famine on the way. People coming out trying to blow the whistle on that. People coming out trying to blow the whistle on all kinds of draconian legislation. All kinds of bad stuff. War crimes, murder, crime, homelessness, disease. All of these things. Where can we go? Where can we hide? Is there some place we can go? Brethren, it's bad right now. It's only going to get worse. You know why? Because that's what the Bible says. And it's going to get to the place where the only way out of this world is up. We have to head north. The sides of the north, where the Lord is. That's the only way out. And that is the blessed hope that is written in the New Testament. And you got a lot of devils nowadays and they're saying there is no blessed hope. The resurrection's passed already and they overthrow the faith of some like the Bible talks about. If anybody ever says to you that all the book, events of the book of Revelation happened in the first century, just get away from that person. They are lost. They are a heretic. If you could say, you know, maybe, you, maybe talk to them a little bit, see if they're just recently deceived by this. But if they're really set in their ways, a preterist or a historicist or some of these other people, run away from those people. Okay, they are lost, false converts. I will promise you that. I don't care what they say about Jesus and believe that he died for the, their sins. Doesn't matter one bit to me. Those people are lost. They're overthrowing the faith of other people. How can you overthrow the faith of others and be in the faith yourself? It doesn't make any sense. But you can read the book of Revelation. You can say, I can see this stuff coming. I can see Elon Musk with his Neuralink thing that they're putting in people's brains. I can see the, all these other things. And, and in fact, on the subject of Elon Musk, how about the thing of SpaceX? Uh, you know, people are going to destroy the earth, so we have to be able to get off the earth and go to the moon. Sorry, it's not happening. That's not going to happen. But at least he understands the fact that there's no way out of this mess that's coming except up. They think in their wickedness, in their, in their sinful pride, they think to themselves, maybe, just maybe, if we can get off of this planet... If we can get off of the earth, maybe we can get up to the moon and we'll have a little colony up there or something so we can save people. And there are people that are training for this right now as I speak. I remember hearing this one time I was plowing the lane here, the driveway, and I was listening to the radio, just turn it on for something different. I don't usually listen to the radio, but there was some woman and she was an astrobiologist. <laughs> I kid you not. Astrobiologist. And she's studying how to preserve plants in outer space for the final big battles and everything else that happened on this earth. Well, you know, you got a bunch of psychotic men and women in governmental positions and they have their fingers ready to push the buttons to launch nuclear weapons at each other. Things online where you can go and see what would happen, how many people would die if, a, if this nuclear bomb hit this certain city or something. I forget what the name of the website is. If you know it, put it in the comments section below. And by the way, on that subject, I just have to say this. Uh, if your comments are being deleted, it's not me doing it. I check comments maybe once a day okay i'm not just sitting around i have no smartphones on me or anything else um i don't just sit around just deleting people's comments youtube likes to delete the comments on this channel so i'm sorry if your comments have been deleted again i'm getting a lot of that recently here new people come along you feel insulted because i deleted your comments no i didn't all right that's one of the little tactics of satan that they like to use against me you feel hurt because i deleted your comments when i didn't even delete them all right so have to get that out there but the whole point is there are people that are studying right now to try and save the world because they understand what things are happening. They understand that there's all kinds of toxic waste and all kinds of the bee population dying and, and the aquifer drying up in different areas and, and all this stuff. And I'll tell you right now, their only real solution, you're not getting out in a spaceship. Okay, that's just nonsense. That's a way to get people's money. 
The only way that you're getting out of this is if you're born again and the Lord says, come up hither. That's the only way out. Let me show you. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. The answers are in the scripture. Not in the uh, New Age philosophers, and I think man is going to get better and things are becoming more wonderful if we could just wake up everybody and, you know, empower them with truth. <laughs> yeah, uh, not happening uh, unless it's the truth from the scriptures. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 through 14. <clears throat> there hath no temptation, remember that word, temptation, taken you but such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dear, dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Hmm. A way to escape from temptation? Uh, is there some temptation out there today? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> uh, actually, a whole lot. I mean, with the volatility of the economy right now and, and the price of housing and uh, new vehicle prices and credit card debt and big screen TVs and it, just name it, name it. There's so much temptation out there today. The Bible says, beware of covetousness. We're to, you're to flee from that. It's, it's idolatry. Well, how about covetousness? You go online, they're putting ads up, but you can't even control it. You'd put ad blocker on, they still find ways around it. You go to a website, disable ad blocker. We have ads on our website. That's how we pay for things. Please disable your ad blocker. And it just and then they track what you're doing. They they look at your behavior and things online. And, and if you're going to go camping this summer or something, then they'll put camping tents up and you know, coolers and, and shower, solar showers or something for your camping trip. They're listening to you. They're they're doing things. And how many people with a smartphone things? Praise God, I don't have one, but how many people with smartphones you get to talking about something and all of a sudden your smartphone starts to, it's listening to you and it starts to bring up advertisements based on what you're saying. Is there temptation out there right now? Yes, there is. Let me show you a very uh, key verse here. Revelation chapter 3. God has a way to escape from temptation. And there is plenty of it. Like I said, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now, <clears throat> there's a lot of different ways that you can interpret that verse. And, uh, and, but with, according to the scriptures, you can use all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. So I'm going to use this thing for correction and instruction in righteousness. Whatever the hour of temptation is, you know, according to eschatology, you know, the end time prophecy and things, we're not getting into that right now. But instruction in righteousness and correction I would say this is a pretty good hour of temptation. If, it, if you want to make an hour qualify for a time when you're being tempted, just nonstop. But the Bible says that there's a way to escape it. Hmm. And what happens in the future when the hour of temptation actually gets worse and things become even worse? We're going to need a way to escape that time. We're going to need a way to say, I think I need to leave now. And there's only one way out. And that's up. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let me show you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. One of the most amazing promises in the scriptures. And I'll be doing another study on this after this one. Where I'll get into even more detail. But the resurrection of the body of Christ is coming. It's the blessed hope. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. The Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 
Isn't it comforting to know that there's a way out? This hour of temptation, this horrible time when all these bad things are happening and there's no place to run to? I mean, yes, you could come out here. This is my land here the Lord gave us many years ago, back in 2017. And I'm thankful for this land, very thankful for this land. I can't imagine living even back where I grew up, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Um, this is a lot better than it was down there. But boy, some of the cities and things and being in the suburbs of a city or whatever, I can't imagine what it'd be like to live in that. This is better here, but it's not perfect. I don't feel completely 100% safe here, even in this area. But uh, am I going to feel safe when the Lord says, come up hither? Yeah, going to be getting a new body at that point in time too. This corruptible shall put on incorruption. This mortal shall put on immortality. It's going to be a really great time. And that's really the only way to escape this thing, through Jesus Christ. And you can laugh and joke and do whatever you want. If you're out there and you're a lost man or woman, and you think, oh, this is just fairy tale stuff, uh, you're taking a big risk. Oh, I'm willing to take the risk. Well, that's because you're rather stupid. And I'm being very blunt with you here. Um, you're very foolish. Well, I, I believe that my church will uh, be there to preserve me. How's your church doing there, Roman Catholics? With Pope Francis just, just wreaking havoc and destroying your church, your holy church that uh, was founded upon, you know, Jesus Christ and then Peter and the apostles. Uh, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It doesn't bear any resemblance at all to what was going on in the New Testament. I mean, that should give you a pause for concern. I mean, if I said some guy comes along to me and he says, hey, did you know that your, your uh, Savior, God manifests in the flesh, is, a, flesh is actually a, a man named, um, you know, uh, Eric. And he uh, rode in a Harley Davidson motorcycle group and he had an accident. And that's what's there to pay you for your sins. I'd say, no, it's not what the Bible says. <laughs> the Bible doesn't say anything like that. Jesus Christ, he died for my sins. He died on a cross shed his blood to pay for my sins. He was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Well, some guy comes along and he says, hey, you know what? Your church, the, the church that truly saves is this one that has these huge big temples, guys walking around with gold staves and, and gold threaded garments on and crowns on their heads and everything. And I look and I say, I, I don't see that in here. You might want to consider some things. If you're an atheist, you might want to consider that this world is getting bad in a hurry. There are some things you don't even have to pick up a Bible. All you have to do is just look at the world and the way things are going. And you start to realize, I think that there's some problems coming. And then you can look at that science out there, the things that are sight. And then you can look in your Bible and say, huh. You know, the Bible prophesied that a bunch of bad things would happen in what the Bible calls the end times or the last days. I wonder if there's a correlation. Maybe there's a connection there. Maybe I should start to think about what the Bible says and not what professing Christianity does. You see, that's what the average atheist does. The average atheist says, I don't believe in the Bible. The Bible's a book of lies. The Bible is a book of fairy tales. It's nonsense and whatever. You say, what's your proof? They say, look what the Christians are doing. <laughs> look at organized religion. That's how I know the Bible's not true. Um, no. <laughs> Read the Bible and you'll see that the Bible is against what professing Christians do and what organized religion is doing and has done. The Bible condemns them. But you and your foolish pride your self-righteous pride, you want to attack the Bible and Jesus Christ based on what a bunch of wicked people that profess to believe in him are doing. That makes no sense at all. That's not a logical thing. Revelation chapter 4. We'll finish here. You better get a hold of these things. You know, right now it's all uh, fun and games, so to speak. But the time's going to come when all of a sudden the spiritual aspects of this book are going to start to become sight. The Bible says in the future that the mystery of God will be finished. In the book of Revelation, God reveals himself to man. There's no more question. And the people who have taken the mark of the beast in the future, 
they're looking up to heaven and they can see God and they're blaspheming him. They hate God. So they're not really atheists, they're God haters. Let's look about the way up, the way out. Revelation chapter 4. After this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me. That's why it's the trump of God. Only two places in scripture will you ever see the word trump of God in the King James Bible. The ones from the Vatican, no idea what they say. King James Bible, two places. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The trump of God shows up both places. It's not the final trumpet or the seventh trumpet of the angel or something like that. It's the trump of God. And that's why John hears a, the first voice which I heard was as it were a, of a trumpet talking with me. It's a voice. He hears a voice calling his name. That's what he hears. And what does it say? Which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Immediately. You see, here's the whole thing. I believe in what's called the firmament, which is above the earth. And whatever you want to make it, oh, it's an ice shield, or it's this, or it's that, whatever. The Bible says it's a firmament. Out here, because I don't live near a city, at night, last night I came out, I can look up and I can see stars. I can see the Milky Way right above me. It's beautiful at night here. And all these stars, just more than you can number. And you know what? I don't look and I don't see this above me, a, a flat plane going like. What I see is I see a firmament. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. In the book of Psalms, it says that. The firmament shows his handiwork. You can look up and you can see it at night. It's curved like that. Well, we're going to build a special magic spaceship and we're going to fly up to the moon and we're going to build a colony there. We're going to make a trip to Mars and we're going to go and we're going to colonize other planets and we're going to have preserve you with our astrobiologists. We're going to take plants and, and maybe we should take a fir tree like this one and, and maybe a cedar tree. Do we have any cedar trees around? And we could take some vegetables and some strawberries and some raspberries and some potatoes and we're going to have them growing on the moon. No, you're not. You know why? Because there's a door and there's only one man that can open that door. And that's the one that calls you by name and says, come up hither. That's why the Bible talks about that there's thieves and they try to come in through the door. They come in through some other way. And the door is locked. They can't get through the door. Well, then I'll crawl up. I'll try to go some other way. SpaceX, um, Space Force. Uh, maybe we could have Virgin Airlines and he can create the thing and we can get to the space and we can fly around and we'll have Star Trek, the next generation and Star Trek Enterprise and, and, we'll, and we'll fly boldly go where no man has gone before and, and we'll fly rockets up there and we'll, we'll do all these other things. We'll escape what's coming. No, you won't. There's no way out but up and the only way up is through the Lord Jesus Christ. That's just your opinion. No, it's not. I know him personally. He changed my life many years ago. I speak to him every day. He speaks to me through his word. Oh, you're delusional. We'll see about that. We'll see. We'll see. And someday, you know what, you atheists out there that can't stand me, you papists out there and all the other idiots out there and things, you know the best thing for you to do? And all you wicked people at YouTube that all constantly censor this, this uh, ministry, you know what you, sh you should do? And I've requested this before. I have a prayer request for you. Please pray to God and say, God, if you're real, get rid of Denlinger, please. Get rid of Brian Denlinger. I'm sick and tired of seeing this fanatic nut. I'd like you to just get rid of him. Catch him up. Get him out of here. And all the other fanatic Christians too. Just out of here. Please do that for me, okay? Because I'd like to leave. <laughs> uh, I'd rather not be here irritating you. I'd rather be up in heaven with all my brothers and sisters in Christ. You can join us if you want to, uh, if you lower your self-righteous pride. But uh, if you don't want to do that, you say, I want to see this thing by sight. I don't want faith. I want to see it happening. I want to see the book of Revelation happening. And you know what the book of Revelation says? Well, you're a little crazy. But if you want to see it, then please pray that this thing happens. That the Lord says, okay, 
Body of Christ, come up, Heather. I long for that day. And brethren, I don't care how bad things get in this world. I don't care how bad things get in this life. We are not as others which have no hope. We have a blessed hope. A purifying hope. We have that promise of the scriptures. Don't worry. Well, well I wonder what it says in Greek. I wonder what the Receptus says. And I wonder what the Nestle Lalonde says. And I wonder, I wonder, I should probably go to a theological seminary and see what my professor says. Uh, don't worry about that. You can read a King James Bible and you can get the answers to your questions. What already happened in the first century? It's already happened. You're teaching Jesuit futurism. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, if you think it already happened, crazy person, um, when did saints leave the earth? When did, were saints caught up? And if they were, why are we still here? What's the point? A <laughs> uh, bunch of nonsense. Um, I didn't refer to any Jesuit teaching today. I didn't refer to C.I. Schofield or anybody else. Well, they were the ones that taught it to you. Then why is it that I'm teaching things that they didn't teach? All the different studies I've done on the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. All the years I've preached on this issue. And I've, the Lord has shown me things, inspired me to preach certain things that none of these other guys, you won't find it in C.I. Schofield or any of the other dispensational guys or whatever else. Huh. Isn't that something? Well, then I guess I must be a Jesuit or something because I'm furthering futurism. Uh, or I could actually believe the Bible. And by the way, if you actually look on my channel, there's a video I did on the whole uh, Manuel Lacunza and Francisco Ribeiro, I think the guy's names are, that, or I think it's the same guy, two different names or whatever the thing is, and this thing that he wrote about the pre-trib rapture. And in the introduction, a pastor that did the, wrote the foreword, he said it's actually a post-trib rapture that they propose. So people don't even know what they're talking about. But, you know, magic world of YouTube and Internet land. Uh, hey, I can be a Bible scholar because I watched 10 videos or something. I binged watched videos for a month. And now I'm a Bible scholar. I don't think so. So this will be the first of uh, two studies that I'm going to be doing today on the issue of the catching up of the body of Christ. And brethren, there's no way out. I mean, we're looking for a place, you know, and, and uh, I've considered maybe selling this land and going someplace else. And, you know, and, and I just, I look around the country and I, I see this happening and they're, they're talking about, you know, red flag laws possibly being passed in Maine. And they're talking about this and liberal this, that, and these agendas. And I just think, oh, where should I go, Lord? Where am I supposed to go? And, oh, America's going to fall apart. Maybe I should go to Russia. Maybe I should try to get over there. Uh, well, no, because Russia is implementing a, a central bank digital currency. And, oh, okay, well, uh, maybe, can I go back to Germany? Oh, no, Germany's filled with liberals and Germany's doing all these other things. They're getting ready to go to World War III. And, you know, and, and I just think, where am I supposed to go, Lord? And the Lord says, just, uh, just wait. Do a little bit more work there, son. You're going to be coming home soon. How soon? I don't know. Uh, could be a few years yet. I have no idea. I'm hoping it's soon. I really am. Uh, I don't ever want to lose my love for the Lord's appearing because that's one of the crowns that you get, rewards at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. You can watch my studies on that. So that is going to be it for this sermon. And I uh, just wanted to, I'm going to shift some of my preaching here. I do a lot of negative stuff, you know, rebuke sin and whatever else, but I want to be a blessing to the brethren and just kind of remind you of this blessed hope that we have a, you know, the glorious appearing of, of Jesus Christ that we're looking forward to, you know. And uh, think of the, the old hymn, you know, face to face with Christ my Savior, face to face what will it be when with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ who died for me. Face to face shall I behold him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory I shall see him by and by. If you don't know that old hymn, look it up. It's a beautiful one. A lot more stanzas and I don't have memorized the whole thing. But um, Jesus is coming again. 
Coming again, coming again. Maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, and maybe soon. Coming again, coming again. Oh, what a wonderful day it will be. Jesus is coming again. And you go through that. I mean, there's so many old hymns that are about the coming of Jesus Christ. He's coming again. We're going to see him face to face. What joy that day will bring. That's why I look forward to it. Believe me, if, if the Lord would give me one request, I've heard other preachers say this, it would be for the rapture. It would be the catching up. Oh, it's, I know, the word rapture is not in the Bible. I get it. But it's a rapturous event. Okay? So it's in the, the old Latin Vulgate, I believe. Um, but the whole point is, it's a good thing. It's going to produce that joy of going to see the Lord. And that's what we had to look forward to, brethren. That's the next event. Uh, well, what if they do this and they bring in this and they bring in that? Okay. They might bring in some things. It's our responsibility to kind of fight for a little while here yet, uh, our time on the earth. But when that day comes and when we are finally ready to go, it's going to be bye-bye. And I hope that there isn't anything that's between you and Jesus Christ right now that you don't want to see him today. Um, you should want to see the Lord more than anything else. So that's going to be it for this study. See you in the next one. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.